We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good morning, tubers. Madam Roy back once again. Back to you with a holiday cooking video. And uh, we're going to be making the Linzer tarts. Or cookies, some people call We call them tarts. Either one. And I'm going to actually turn this over to Mom because this is her baby. She's the baker in the family. So without further ado, go ahead. Hello. Well, first thing we have to do with our Linzer tarts. Now, I make them with hazelnuts or they also called um, filberts. And um, I haven't made these in a few years. So I don't, you know, I just have to... Refresh my memory on how to do it, but it calls for three and a third cups of finely three ground and third hazelnuts. Cups of hazelnuts, which I hope I have enough, because <laughs> they're hard to find, the shelled hazelnuts. One year I couldn't find them here, and I actually shelled them myself. I said, never again. My hands were killing me for days, you know, from cracking them on and opening them up. I said, oh, there's no way I'll do that. But, uh... I can't remember where exactly I found these, but I did find them. Oh, I think we got them at Trader Joe's. I think you're if you right. Want, if you want the shelled hazelnuts, Trader Joe's has them. But I can't find them anywhere else. And Trader Joe's, or you can pretty much find one in every area in the United States. Yes. And I think they're abroad, too. I need a third of a cup, and I think I used it for something, so excuse me, I have to go over here and get my cup, and here is a third of a cup, and I think I have, I actually have some left, and I'm, are the cat's going to play with them, because I just knocked one on the floor, and he's going to roll it around, it's Milo over here, did you find that nut, nope, <laughs> alright, so that should be it, I don't use my food processor that often either, so bear with me, I hope I can get it to work this time. I tried it for something else, so oh, I guess a week or so ago, and I thought it was broken and the blade was not seated correctly. And we were ready to almost to throw it out, my husband and I, and I finally pulled around and said, oh, that's what's wrong with it. So here it goes, going to make some noise, so. Let's make sure, nope, a little more. And make short work out of chopping nuts. Yeah. It's just fine. So I wanted to make sure I don't have any big uh, lumps in there. I don't think so. One more. One more. And, uh, you know, I think these, some people can make these with the nuts, but the hazelnuts or the filbers gives it such a good flavor. It's very different than, uh, than with walnuts or pecans or anything. It just has a whole different flavor to it. Back. All right, so our next step is, I, I melt, well, I went to soften, but actually I melted by mistake. I'm going to have to unplug this and plug back in my uh, mixer. All right, now we're going to uh, start putting our ingredients together, and my recipe is over here. You need three sticks of, salt, of softened butter, and actually I put in the microwave, mine got a little melty, but it still should be fine. So three sticks of butter go in. A lot of clanking. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get it all. I don't want to waste any of it. <laughs> and that one doesn't want to come off, so use a good old finger. All right. And, and then we're going to, it says beet butter and sugar in a large bowl, and it's three sticks of butter and one cup of sugar. So I'll start my mixer, which is, I haven't used this mixer in a very long time either. Usually mostly use it for baking. I have a smaller one that I just use for, you know, the hand stuff, so... while and it's not it doesn't seem like a lot of sugar for three um three sticks of butter but you gotta remember in this you put uh jam inside so the jam is sweet so i guess they don't want you to make the uh the dough too sweet but you know what i always do i always uh, take a little bite and check it because i happen to like my cookies sweet so we're so I'll, aware yes what i will do is take a little bite which, excuse me i'll get a spoon Put my fingers in it. Which we used to do, but since we're going to be giving these away, it's not very hygienic. <laughs> no. Mm, 
and that's pretty sweet. Believe it or not, that's pretty sweet. All right, so it says to light and fluffy, so I'm going to mix it a little bit more. A little higher speed. That's good. All right, and then it says beat in an egg and a egg yolk, and I already did that. I had already uh, put an egg yolk. I do, I do it through my fingers and took all the white off, and then I put an egg in there. So there's one yolk and one egg in there, and it says to add that. Fold that in, or beat it in. Wow, that's a yolky egg there, really yellow. <laughs> oh yeah, I can see it right through the bowl. Thank you, it's so, yeah, I've never seen one so yellow. Now this one is the kind of thing, it doesn't go around itself, it just kind of, I don't, what would you say, Matt? You just kind of, it just kind of does it itself. It's yeah. not like one of those real fancy mix it, mixers. Well, it's supposed to, but that's not the right bowl. We, yeah, yeah. Uh, we bought that at a garage sale, and unfortunately, the original bowl was gone. Ah, I didn't even realize that. See, I'm glad you told me. But it, it's better than my hand mixer. It's a little um, little sturdier. That's it. Yeah, it's got more power to it. Yeah. The modern hand mixers are not very powerful. Right. They're really lacking the motors, in, at least in quality. Wow, that made that yellow. I can't get on how yellow that is. That is something. So, beat in the egg yolk and the vanilla, and it's uh, a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Although, I'm probably going to put a teaspoon in because I like the vanilla. <laughs> now, tell them the story about that vanilla. Oh, my gosh. I got this vanilla in BJ's probably, I want to say, about five years ago. At least. And you can see I don't use much because I got at least half left. So, last year, because Matt and I were on our... On our uh, lifestyle weight, you know, weight, weight loss lifestyle journey, we didn't bake because we didn't want to have anything. So this year, I'm mostly baking because I want to give the I want to give the cookies away. I had, when we were up in um, New York at that uh, Village Variety, the uh, Endicott Liquidators. I think it was in the summer. They had beautiful tins, uh, like in the shape of um, different uh, or or like a like a, a house or a, or a church. And, and it plays music on the bottom, has its own cookies in it. But the cookies are just cheap cookies. So I got an idea of keeping the tins, taking the cookies out, and then putting my own cookies in. So that's what I'm going to give away this year to some friends and maybe some people I know at church. Or... And that's what some of these are going to go in. Right, exactly. So what's yeah. the next ingredient? So the next ingredient is stir in flour, baking powder, and cinnamon. Now I already measured out three and a third cups of flour. So I need... a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and my teaspoon is here there we go and then we need let's see a teaspoon of baking powder there not baking go. soda no nope, baking powder and since I got my teaspoon I need just give me a minute I'm gonna wipe wipe this off I don't want to get my Pro teaspoon in the... We don't baking. do cross-contamination No, I don't want to get it in the baking soda, so I'll be ready. A teaspoon of baking powder, now that I cleaned off my teaspoon. And that's going in with the flour and the cinnamon. It seemed like a very lot... didn't seem like much cinnamon to me, and I usually always add... You know, everybody cooks and they do a little bit more than... In fact, I'm going to stick a little bit more in there because I, I like spice. I'm just gonna stick a little more in, and you know, if you don't, if you prefer less, you put less. If you want to put the amount in, you put the amount. Hold in. that up, show them what it looks like. It's yeah, got it's a little bit of a red hue a little to bit, it. Yeah, a little bit. All right, so stir in flour, baking powder, and cinnamon. And the thing is, after I do this, I gotta wrap it in wax paper, and it's gotta chill. But we'll do that another half of the uh, video when I get to that point where I roll it out oh, and I'll you, show you how to put it together and everything. You lost some. Oh, did I? Oh boy, what a mess. <laughs> oh, I did, didn't I? It's, it's all okay. Right, we'll save it, we'll save it. I didn't wear the right clothes, did I? Look at me, I'm no. in the dark, dark clothes. It's the same thing that happens to me when I make my bread. <laughs> I always drop flour yeah. everywhere. Definitely should not wear very something very dark. Yeah, I'm not too crazy about this mixing bowl. I haven't used it much, and I forgot, you know, and you really have to put the stuff, because it, it just really goes in the middle. But it's kind of hard to hold, because it's very heavy. It's, oh, now it's going by if itself. If you get the right motion, it, it might turn a little bit by yeah, itself. let's see. Let's see. Here we go. <laughs> Woo! Let's hope it doesn't fly off. <laughs> you spin me right, right round, in. baby, right and round like a red trouble. Okay, here we go. Let's 
some reason I got a lot on the edges. I don't know why. And you have to do the flower slowly. Yeah, yeah, otherwise it'll fly all over the place. All right, Tourists, we figured out the problem with the uh, mixer. Tell them. Yeah, there's two holes that you can put the, the plate underneath that rotates, and obviously I had it in the wrong hole because look at now, it's really going like crazy. So it's mixing. I told you I very rarely use this mix. Oh, it's great. I don't use this mixer very often, so I wasn't aware that it was not in the right uh, place. But look at it now, it's going great. And, that, and that's very interesting because I know for a fact that's still not the right bowl for it, but right. it works. Hey. And it was from the thrift store, and it was a good price, so can't complain. Can't complain about that. So I'll show you in a minute. After it's, let me just see if I need to. I need to. She's gonna go ahead and finish mixing it, and then we'll show you, show what, you what it looks, looks like, like in just have, a moment. Yeah, we have. Some. All right, now we've got a pretty blend, but the last um, ingredient we need to do is put the nuts in. So here we go, and this is working so much better. Wow, look at that. Awesome. Seems like a lot of nuts, doesn't it? Yeah, and you don't now begin to necessarily have to use every bit of it. No, but you know what? It's kind of glopping up on the sides here, so I gotta let me push it down a little. There we go. Oh, and it's going everywhere. And we'll go ahead and pause this and I'll show you what it looks like once all the nuts have yes. stirred in. Once we've got it together here. Very well. Alright, tubers, I thought I'd give you a close-up of what it looks like oh. with all the nuts. Look at it. It's Look how thick it is. Side. It's rolling yeah. up the uh, going up blender the or the uh, agitator. It's going to be flying out pretty soon. <laughs> Here we go. And it's supposed to be thick, yeah. correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a dough. You're going to roll it out. You know, it's a dough you roll out and you cut with cookie cutters, so it has to be like that. So basically, you're just going to keep pushing it down, mixing yep. it, pushing yep. it down. Yep. Exactly. If I can turn it on, because now my hands are all icky. Oh, there goes the thing. It's stuck. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you get it? What? Get the the, no, the thing oh, the oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, it, I don't remember it being quite this thick usually. Look, look at I know. Oh, it, it will be because it's a it's it's a dough. It's not like a dough you it's a dough you gotta roll out. I gotta get it off the beaters in a minute, but I just wanna kinda That's incredible. Well, at least we have a mixer that has enough power to, yes. to mix it properly. That's why I use this because this is more a heavy duty mixer than the other one I have. You know, it's just a handheld little mixer and probably would burn the motor out doing it with this because there's a lot of uh, you know three and a half cups of flour is a lot I mean not flour I'm seeing of the uh, nuts you know makes it hard but and of course you have to use like. human power too right my hands are clean but this is basically <laughs> what it looks like and after you chill it um, we'll come back and we'll roll it out and cut it out with the cookie cutters and uh, bake it and we'll show you how we put it together all right tubers so that's the basic dough we'll all talk right. to you guys a little bit later all right bye bye all right, Tuber, so this is about two days later now. We uh, got too tired that night, and the dough is all ready to be formed, and I'm going to bring it over to Mom. All right, so this is the dough for the Windsor tarts, and I'm gonna, I have to roll it out to it. It says about a quarter of an inch. So I'm sorry, it might sound pounding, but that's how I get it going. <laughs> I think the cat's getting a little nervous. We just freaked the cat out to no <laughs> yeah. end. Back, Steve. And we're going to roll it out to about a quarter of an inch. I'm, rolling dough is not my favorite thing. It moves, so I kind of have to hold it. I hold it. <laughs> the paper at the end. Oh, uh, you know what I need to do, too? I need to put my oven to 350, so I'm just I'll take care oven. of that. Thank you, Matthew. Yep, roll that dough out. Roll, roll, roll. That's I like the ones on the baking shows. They don't have the handles. They just have a, like a, a wooden thing and they go like this. Believe it or not, my mother-in-law gave me this years ago and I think it's from, oh my gosh, I think it's from Tupperware. It came with a mat that you could roll the dough out on and it had the, the different circles for the different size um, pie crusts. But it got old and I had to throw it out. But I do have a wooden... A wooden um, rolling pin, but I don't know. I kind of like this one. Let's see how we're going here. It's getting you, there. It's you look like you're struggling. Oh, yeah, a little bit sure. Get my muscles on today. Just do a little bit thinner. 
And this has been in the fridge for a while, so that's this why is, it's so hard well, to roll. Yeah, it's been in the fridge, but we took it out, what, for about a half hour, maybe 40 minutes? Mm -hmm. To let it uh, soften. I just want to make sure I got equal kind of pressure. Yeah, kind of feel and just see if it seems like it's even to me. All right, I got to get a... Uh, I need to get one of my cookie sheets over here. I now, I that. like stoneware pans better than um, aluminum. I just feel this, it, it cooks better. It doesn't burn the bottoms. Well, that feels just a little, little, little higher on this side. Let's try that now. All right, so this is the, I'm using this size. Usually I use a bigger size, probably, probably use about, it's not a lot of difference. I probably use that size, but since I'm going to, Put a bunch of cookies in a small tin. I wanted to make them a little smaller this time. So I'm gonna try to do as many as I can. And you have to remember with these that, uh, well, I'll show you in a minute because the tops have holes in them, so I have to have, try to have equal numbers. <laughs> See how I do. Mm, am I gonna make it in that one without cutting something off? I don't think so. But we're getting there. We're getting there. All right. So now I've made my oh, I've made my circles, and I'm gonna put them on the cookie sheet. I think three across will probably be good. And I like this new thing I got because it scoops a bunch up without having to do one at a time with a little spatula. It's really working well. I'm glad I was able to get some new things this year at the little store that I, cooking store, kitchen store I went to. And of course the scraps can be reused yes, to make more yeah, cookies, exactly. right? Well, you have to keep, yep, that's what you have to do. You keep doing it until you use all the scraps up. Okay. Love yeah. this thing. I'm so glad I got this. All right, tubers, give you a better idea. Mom's filled this cooking sheet right here. And now she's going to use the other stoneware. And what's the advantage to using stone? I don't know what it is. For me, it just cooks more evenly. It uh, it doesn't tend to burn. Every time I use um, aluminum or some kind of metal, it's like some of the cookies get burned on the bottom. This, they come perfectly every time. Now, the other thing I told you that I have to do is... Here it is. What do I do with my little thingy? Hold on. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, now... Remember, the, these are the, some are the bottoms, but i got to make tops that have holes in it because when you put the jelly, you want the jelly to shell through. So, let me see what i got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. i got an odd number, so. So, I'll do about eight of them with the holes. And this is so you can fill them later. Yes. And, of course, we reuse all of it, so... Sometimes they come out with this and sometimes they don't. So Looks like a mini donut. Got six. You know what it actually is, which I was surprised? It, it's for cannolis. It said really? it was for cannolis, not to fill them. I guess you somehow you wrap the cannolis around. I've never, uh, yeah, that's what it actually said it was. They had, a, um, they had a set of three or four of them, but I didn't need that many. I just, actually I had a, one. I don't even know where I got it from, but it was getting all kind of bent. It was not as uh, thick as this one. So. And then, of course, so you have to pull the them out. out. <laughs> yeah, taking the holes. Whoop, I don't want to take the cookie with me. All right, tubers, I'm going to pause this, and we'll show you the next step in just a couple of minutes. Okay. All right, tubers, now it's time for them to go into the oven at 350 degrees. Right, I think I've been cooking so much, I have to look back at my own. Oh, now I'm all steamed up my glass. Oh, yeah, that happens <laughs> to all of us. i got to find my recipes. There. Oh, here they are. As you can see, we are cooking, it makes a mess, and you have a lot of stuff. We're not extremely well organized, unfortunately, but we'll get there. For about 12 minutes, so I will set that for 12 minutes. And we will show you what it looks like when the 12 minutes is up. All right, tubers, it is about, what, what was it, 12, 12 minutes? minutes? I'm going to check and see if, and see if they're they ready to come out. I'll leave them in just for another minute, I think. It's not always exact. Yep, you want to make sure that they're totally done. Yeah. All right, tubers, give it another minute, and we'll show you guys the next step. All right. I'm going to check them again. Sometimes, you know, it needs another minute or so, so. 
That might feel kind of soft still. I really should put my thermometer in and just see how the... Uh... She wants to get them exact. Yeah. Well, they will cook again when they're out, so... I just like flip it over, see if the bottom's getting a little bit brown. I think, I think they're good. I think good. they're good yeah. because you got to remember they still cook a little bit while they're on there. So I'm going to take the other batch. This is actually a pizza stone, but it works great for cookies too. <laughs> it's the only two uh, stone where I have, so I use it all the time. All right, so we'll time this for 12 minutes. And now we can work with and these. Then we'll see how that goes. And when these cool off after I put a rack, I can do another batch. I put the dough back in the uh, fridge because it was getting a little soft from when I was manipulating it. So, But it takes a bit to do it. I mean, it's, you know, it's batch after batch after batch. And it's a little time consuming. And I only have the two pans, so I have to keep alternating. All right, tubers. We'll let those cool off, and then we'll show you the next step. Yeah. Talk to you guys well, shortly. I baked all the cookies. Um, the last batch I made when uh, we were filming before is I forgot to make holes in some. So I did the bottoms and then the next batch I did the tops. So now I have enough. I think I'm only, I got two tops left over there. I think and everything else should, they're matching up like a sandwich. See? Tops and bottoms. There we go. So I have here, whoop, and it fell in. Yuck. I think here I have raspberry peach and this one is strawberry jam mm -hmm. so let me just stick this in here let's do some peaches what I did is I heated it up and they got a little cold I probably should reheat it again let's see how this works so you put a little jelly in well actually some of these are preserves and some are actually jam and you pop it down let me just see there we go all right Actually, let's do a little bit with the, I think this one I said mm. is raspberry. Whoop, I put the top, I put the top in the top. Oh, the top <laughs> and the top, and the top's and the top. You can see how they look. We'll do another raspberry. Mm. And my hands are getting icky and sticky. And that's pretty much what you do. Up. You just got to do this for a whole heck of a lot of these it. cookies. And, and I, oh, there's the top. Got to get mom to do this, and then we'll show you what the finished product looks exactly. like. We're almost done, right? We're almost done. After filling them all up, we, I'll show you the next step, and then we, we're pretty much done. All right, tubers. See you guys in a few minutes. Okay, we're on our last step, and it's to put the powdered sugar on top. So I put a little bit in my... Sifter. I haven't had one of these in a while. Mother one broken. I just bought this one, so here we go. There's something so satisfying about watching flour sifting or uh, no, sugar just, sifting yeah, on cookies. Sugar. Yeah, some of them are getting a little too much there, but it's hard to hard to adjust it. Making me wish for snow. <laughs> okay, let's see. Got enough. Let's see. That got a little too much, and some got a little too little. Well, that's okay. We're yep, not 100% yep. exact on do, this channel. <laughs> then what I do afterwards is I take my finger, and you want the jelly to show, so I just put it in, in a little bit of water, just to dissolve the sugar. So you see the pretty. Looks almost like glass. You're just gonna go ahead and do all that on all of them. And that's pretty much it. It'll let, it, let the jelly uh, set for a while because then you go put it away. You don't want it to get stuck on the bottom. Usually I'll put it in a, a tin and then I'll put some either parchment or saran wrap on the next level and then just keep layering it. But basically that's, that's Linzer tarts or Linzer cookies. All right, tubers, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to take some pictures. Stay tuned. The next thing we'll be making is fruitcake. Fruitcake tomorrow. And as always, and especially this season, have, have a, a blessed, blessed day, day everybody. everybody.